a world so accustomed to violence and brutality, their suffering has stunned us all. These are the people of Bosnia-Herzegovina, the victims of the most vicious campaign of mass murder in Europe since Nazi Germany. A little less than a year ago, the people of Bosnia dreamt of creating the freest and most tolerant state in all of Europe. Today, the evils of ethnic cleansing have turned them into some of the most helpless people on earth. What the world sees are the dead and the dying. Fusion near the rope barricades was getting worse, and hundreds of car sevaks threatened the police cordon. Movement into the masjid, and I could see the car sevaks make their way straight to the top with no resistance at all from the security forces. sentences. In spite of the impressive gains made by made in science and technology, it's a pity that like uh, cancer which is not detected, religious fundamentalism is also spreading fast and dangerously. Some days back we had the spectacle of fundamentalists barging into a show organized by the Sahmat in Bombay and destroying an exhibition which was exhibiting cartoons already published in various newspapers after the Babri Masjid episode. In Bangladesh, the religious fundamentalists are out for the blood of the woman author who has become controversial after writing her Lajja. In America, Christian fundamentalists are trying to bomb abortion clinics. But the maximum, but the highest award in this field should, should go to Iran, you know. Iran is crazy about football. They are directly telecasting the World Cup uh, matches, but the audience, you know, by some camera trick, the audience in, in Iran for these football matches are made to appear fully clothed. See, there are no topless males, there are no women wearing shorts or anything like that. By some trick, the audiences are fully clothed as if it is the thick of winter in America, though the temperature is, as we all know, is in the high 30s and early 40s in, in, in America because they don't want to show women uh, and men uh, wearing the minimum clothes in Iran. This is the different kind of uh, religious fundamentalism which which frowns on any kind of independent thinking and is ready to physically assault people who don't agree with them on their own version of what is history, what is religion and things like that. Uh, there are four distinguished speakers in this panel. I shall make a very brief introductions of them. They shall, they shall uh, uh, talk on the subject for 15 minutes after 12 minutes, I shall sound a warning which shall allow them time to sum up. And then um, after the four speakers had finished, there will be a question and answer session. The, uh, the, the questions, of course, will be from the audience. They should be brief to the point because Indian journalists don't ask questions. They ask Times of India editorial kind of things, you know. I hope such a thing won't happen here. So we'll have short, brief, pointed questions addressed to individual speaker, and I'm sure we are all going to have a lively session. Now, the speakers are as follows. Father Myron Pereira, who is to my left, is a Christian priest belonging to the Jesuit religious order. For several years, he worked at the Xavier Institute of Communications, Bombay, as a communications teacher, writer, and producer of audiovisual material. On communalism and religious stereotypes, he has produced, along with others, two media kits, 
titled Partly True and Wholly False and Stri Katha. Father Pereira lives at St. Mary's Masgon from where he edits Jeevan, the National Jesuit Monthly, and directs the Jesuit Office of Information and Public Relations. We also have Dr. Vasudev Vyas, visiting professor of Hindi and Ayurveda for over 40 years at the Podar College, Bombay. Dr. Vyas is a wife by profession and he has, uh, uh, he has made a deep study of the subject under discussion. Next to him is Dr. Zakir Naik, again an MBBS man from Grant Medical College. He is the Secretary General of an institution called Islamic, Islamic Research Foundation. He is a student of comparative religion and I am told he can, he can quote verbatim copious passages from all the religious books including uh, Bhagavad Gita and the Upanishads. The final speaker is Mr. Ashok Sahani who has the distinction of translating the controversial book Lajja into Marathi. So we have uh, four different four speakers of different caliber, different categories. It's going to be a very interesting discussion. I now request Father Pereira to start off or in the football parlance to kick off. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Gangavar. Dear friends, the proposition before us has been stated, religious fundamentalism is an obstacle to freedom of speech. Put in these terms, one can answer quite simply